So I'm doing an upgrade of my Prusa printer from 2.5 to 2.S. And that required me to print out a bunch of new parts. And so I print them out before I disassembled the printer. And I took it all apart and now I'm putting it back together. And then suddenly I realized, oh no, I have a problem because these prints that I made have a layer shift in them, unfortunately. And that layer shift makes them uh, uh, so that they're not going to work in the upgrade. And to make matters worse, now that I have this printer all disassembled, uh, it's going to be really hard to make new prints. Uh, and I checked on Prusa's website to see if I could order pre-printed parts, and it's a 10-week lead time. So I thought, oh no, I won't be able to print for 10 weeks. But then I realized, oh no, I do have a way to make these parts. I could make them on my resin printer. But first, before I did that, I wanted to check the temperature stability of the resin prints for use in this um, printhead because uh, the printhead does get hot and I wanted to make sure it wouldn't um, uh, get too soft or melt when used in a printhead. So I decided to run some experiments to find out if the resin prints, in fact, would be stable enough to use around this uh, hot um, extruder. So let's go run the experiments. In order to evaluate the temperature resistance of resin prints, I put samples of PLA and polycarbonate FDM objects, along with two Soraya blue resin objects in my small oven. The FDM objects both totally failed by 150 degrees centigrade. The resin prints, however, were fine up over 300 degrees C, and they never failed in my oven. So then I did a torture test with a soldering iron. The resin object could resist the full heat of the iron with no effect. I sliced the files from Prusa and printed them in my AnyCubic printer. I cleaned them in an isopropyl alcohol bath using a simple dunk and swish for about 30 seconds. Right away I found that my parts were slightly larger than I had planned and I had to file things that had tight tolerances. The printhead uses an infrared sensor to detect filament outages. So I either used one of the black pieces that I had printed out originally, or I used a marker to block IR light that might be coming in and confusing the sensor. It seemed to work fine. All of the small internal dimensions were slightly larger, again I think because it wasn't cleaned enough. So I had to scrape them out either using a knife, a file, or in some cases a Dremel tool. Eventually I got all the parts to fit. I did use a tap on some of the 3 millimeter holes rather than trying to screw them in. The resin material is a little bit tougher than FDM materials and I didn't think it would self-tap properly. Well, so we're done and it worked actually fairly well. Uh, resin makes a great material for building FDM printheads. It is more um, temperature tolerant than any thermoplastic you're going to use in FDM printing. So you can actually heat this up to a very high temperature and it won't melt at all. It'll burn before it will melt. And as you can see, the only real issue I had was cleaning on these interior areas, uh, nut holes and other interior surfaces. Uh, if you're going to do something very precise like this, you need to do a better job of cleaning than I did simply by dunking it and swishing it. 
So I would recommend others going down this path to invest in an ultrasonic cleaner and make sure you do a very thorough job of cleaning those things out before you do the post-cure UV light treatment. Uh, you might also want to invest in various um, uh, cotton swabs or other things to make sure those interior surfaces are all very well cleaned. But uh, other than that, it's a great approach and I think others should try it as well. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.